Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. A bit of an echo in this room, I've not recorded here before. But anyway, I have three Sauvignons in front of me, and uh, let's see whether they strike beautiful echoes with my palate. Uh, two from France, uh, one from the Loire, one from Bordeaux, and a New Zealand one to finish. Uh, so we're going to start in the Bordeaux one, so it's the lowest alcohol. Roque Saint Vincent 2013 Sauvignon Blanc Bordeaux, uh, 12% alcohol. Let's give it a whirl. It's one of those that's more about greenness than about uh, out and out fruit. Yes, there's a bit of zip of citrus and green apple in there, but um, uh, the thing I, I notice most is this yeah, cut grass, the nettles, the herby characters. So it's like it's going to be a nice zippy, fresh style and uh, mouth watering even. Well, nice zippy style. Huh? Um, grapefruit, that's what that's the, uh, the, the, the character I'm left with in my mouth. A little bit of uh, Alka Seltzer like mineral character and um, yeah, zestiness and, and this clean, pure, herby finish. Some people will probably find it a little bit on the sharp side. Some Sauvignons you can sit and very happily drink by themselves. This very much needs uh, something like some shellfish but, uh, or some sardines. Think about those foods that you squeeze lemon on. And um, that's almost like the squeeze of lemon in a glass. And very nice it is too. Uh, let's try the wine at number two. So that was a Bordeaux to start with. Uh, second one, the Chateau Gaillard Touring Sauvignon Blanc from the uh, Loire Valley. Uh, uh, made with organic grapes from biodynamic viticulture. Uh, give this one a whirl. Well, there's a, uh, it feels like this is going to be a richer style um, and uh, less zippy and um, less grassy than the first one. Feels like it's got a rich earthiness. My slight concern is uh, when I smell it, I pick up something that is ever so slightly dank, um, as, as if oh, there, there is this. Uh, thing that happens in wines, jasmine, where you get some of the berries that are ever so slightly rotted and it gives a particular character to the wine. If you ever had uh, a bunch of grapes and you put a few of them in your mouth and there's one of them that's just where it's split and uh, it's got a little bit grey and slightly mouldy and it doesn't, um, oh, it, it only takes a little bit to dominate the mouth. I'm just wondering whether some of that character is going to come through when I taste it. And yes, it does. I mean, it's only there faint in the background, but uh, I do notice it, and uh, it's funny, it doesn't, it doesn't put me off the wine, I do quite like it, I think I just about prefer it to the previous one, uh, because of this extra layer of richness and flesh, and the, uh, the fruit is, um, yes, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of the citrus in there, but it's riper things, it's things like quince uh, going to rhubarb, uh, but just that little note of the jasmine that makes me go, Mm, maybe in a better vintage uh, they could have done an even better wine. It's good enough as it is, but uh, not quite there for me. Final wine, we're in New Zealand for Teravin, uh, 2013 Sauvignon Blanc uh, from Marlborough, and um, so this weighs in at 13.5%. Uh, anything on here about, um, yeah, fermented, a portion was fermented using indigenous yeast in mature French oak barrels to add texture and weight. What does mature French bar barrels mean? Well, what it means is that um, uh, the wines are not going to give an out-and-out -out oaky character to the wine, but the uh, wine itself will benefit from the softening effect that, um, that time in a slightly porous vessel gives. And this is gooseberries, asparagus, um, and, but not out and out in your face, uh, gooseberries and asparagus. Uh, there'll be some people who've already got their 2014 Sauvignons on the market, but um, this, I think, because of the, the oak aging, um, will have been released that a little bit later, so this will be the current vintage. And uh, I smell it, and I smell an extra layer of richness, um, but it's not gone into that uh, pea poddy character that, uh, that some older Sauvignons can do. It smells good. It comes to taste it, maybe there is a little bit of that uh, slight uh, tinned pea character, but uh, it's more this richness and the sappy, zesty character. Uh, I like its juiciness. I, um, I, I always like wish that they'd done a little bit more on, the, uh, on that slightly wilder, uh, more of the wild ferment, more of the oak aging. Because uh, I, I think that this would probably been better, um, better about six, six months ago. Uh, we are in December 2014 here, um, and it, it's, it's, it's like it's lost some of the freshness of you. It's, it's still nice and zippy, but it's just starting to develop that, um, uh, that more 
um, develop, yeah, car- ever so slightly cabbagey pea pod so- uh, style. Um, so, and whereas I think if they'd, if they'd let, let, let it be in those barrels a little bit longer, it would have got wilder, funkier edges, and the fruit would have been dampened down. Um, and uh, but those other characters that uh, that barrel fermentation can give. Uh, would have been enhanced. I'm not talking about out and out oak flakes, but I'm talking about uh, extra creaminess from the lees and maybe some sort of a bit of funkiness from uh, from the wild yeast. It's good and it's probably my favourite of the three, uh, but um, they were okay. I can't say. Sometimes I get to the end of the tasting and I think, oh god, I'm spoiled for choice. Which one would I like to tuck into tonight? Uh, and um, I can't. I can't say it's anything. I'm I'm sort of going out and going. I need a glass of that. I need a glass of that. Uh, I probably will have a glass of one of them, maybe two, but um, I will leave it at that. See you soon.